I just want to remind you guys that it's a beautiful morning today. Life is beautiful. And we should value every moment, every day. With that said, a thousand days of training to develop, 10,000 days to polish. Think about that deeply. What you see that we do and what performs so naturally is because I dedicated many years to learning. And gunfighting has to enhance your team tactics, your individual tactics to have to enhance your team tactics. All of the movements today is going to enhance the team movements, right? So we talk about high compress. We talk about low readies. Man, we, I've been dealing with that since I was 19 years old, that argument. Let me tell you what my conclusion of that argument is. You know, for many years I had to uh, run low readies, for many years, right? And I was forced by uh, certain units to run low readies. Where do you think, um, why, why do you think a lot of units harp on low readies? Why do you think that is? Safety, catwalk, shoot house, so and so, right? Oh, don't flag me when you shouldn't be up there anyways, right? But the thing is this, so there was a point in my career that, uh, I got to work with the Navy. I got to work with certain uh, Marine units, and they were all about the high compress. And I explained why. It was because they had to do a lot of the uh, the shipboarding stuff, right? And what they found was a high compress, right, um, allowed them uh, to be able to see, right? You think about like if I go low rate. How many how many guys seen this? So where your muzzle is is where your fucking eyes are going to look, right? So what I do in a high compress is think about this guys, it's not a high ready, it's a high compress, just like a low compress, okay? So a compress is, I'm bringing the gun in. All these movements here, like I said, is gonna clean up your abilities to move in the house, right? I compress a gun because I don't wanna overexpose my muzzle on an entry point. I don't wanna overexpose my muzzle on the unknown. So I compress my gun, so, uh, what I learned was the high compress allowed me muzzle awareness. When I say that is, clear gun. All right, so I like um, tension slings. All right, guys, I like tension slings. And for CQB, let's just say I patrol like this, but for CQB, you'll see me come over around my neck, even on a, a two point. And what's that allow me is it allows me to move this weapon freely. And if I need to cinch down, I'll lock down into a two point. Get it? Man, I carry three points, one points, fucking five points. I, I saw slings made out of vines before, out of rebels, okay? So I saw every, almost every form of sling. And what, what I'm gonna tell you is, it's based off of your gunfighting. It's based off of your mission. So if your mission is maybe you have a down officer, you have to pull them out. If you have a one point, you're going to get fucking racked. And you have to jump over fist lines, finch lines, your, your, your sling is everywhere. Your sling is like a holster. It's really important. And you have to understand how to move the sling. So if I need to, so if I need to tighten down this, you'll see me be able to, say I'm, I'm using this, my elbow, and basically I'm weaving this gun in. See it? Or I can loosen it and I can weave, see how I weave it into this position. Understand? So the sling, you better know how to work it to stabilize your, uh, uh, your, your shooting position, but also maximize movement in the house. Understand? So today, if you're running two points, I'm gonna ask that you you release that two point into a neck, right? Because there's no way that I can go weak side 
when it's across. So I'm gonna have to free that to move it across, understand? So let's talk about how I compress. What do I look for? You know, guys, you know, when I first joined the teams, we're like, two? You need to get aggressive on that gun. I'm like, what's aggressive? Lean forward. So I lean forward. And now I lean for more because it get more aggressive. I lean forward more. So what's that do? First, it hurts my fucking back all day, right? That's why you see a lot of guys getting up like this, right? Because back in the old days, that's what we did. We would lean out and we'll pop up like this, right? Pop up, pop up. So that is a conventional low ready to pop. See it? We, we're trained on that. So what I'm gonna teach you is to push, to compress the gun. Compressing the gun is like me throwing a punch, right? It's giving me a reference point on a gun. So on a high compress, my reference point is this muzzle, right? Think about my hands. If I need to touch, if I need to touch Trung, right? I could see him, all I do is just move this hand towards him like I'm pointing a finger, okay? So let's talk about the theory behind that forward drive on a high compress. So Tron, can you stand here, brother? And I'll stand here. So if you see me right here, I want you to look at me. Look at me. Point your drive hand at me. Now looking at me, point your drive hand at Trung. Please don't look at Trung. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> All right, without looking at Trung, point your drive hand at him. Okay, now turn to him. Are you on him? That's how you fucking drive a gun, okay? Miyamoto Masashi said that your normal stance has to be your tactical stance, and your tactical stance has to be your normal stance. This means that these repetitions, these movements, need to be normal. So this is my aggressive stance these days. Notice how my lead leg is here. You know where I learned this from? Boxing. If a boxer is able to move side by side and he's able to work his foot movements, he's able to cut through drills, and that's what I need in the house. I need that stance. So then my gun fighting off of Kyle Lamb's forward drive, I'm like, man, that's so proficient. So then my style has changed, understand? So your normal stance, if you're standing there like this today and you're talking to me, that's your shooting stance, okay? All you're doing is just leaning one leg forward and you're bringing the gun out. All right, so on a high compress, we're gonna work a high compress push and we're gonna work a low compress push. Both of these tactics will be utilized in the shoot house. High compress push and both of these are very dynamic movements. So clear gun, high compress push is I'm standing there, I'm looking at the muzzle, I'm seeing this in my peripheral, I'm looking at the target. Right, so let's just say that gray box is my target. Clear gun, gray box is my target. I see the push, right? So I'm, I'm pushing the gun. Notice how my weapon's what? Already off safe, right? So now it goes back on safe. So once I take the gun off of the line, right, off of um, the mount position, it needs to go back on safe. So here, it's on fire. If I take it off the muzzle line, it goes back on safe. Here, understand? Do we understand the mechanics of a push? Think about a boxing, or think about a boxer. If I have, this is my jab hand, this is my cross hand, and you're a target and you're a target, I'm just gonna box, I'm gonna move T, see? I'm moving to you, I can see you move, I can drive the hand, I'm already on the cameraman, understand? So those are the mechanics that I develop over the years through martial arts, right? If I'm able to fight a guy and he's throwing kicks and I'm able to register, you better I could register on a gun. What's going on? The hardest thing about CQB, situational awareness. You can't fucking see the room, you can't react. You don't see the threat, you can't employ any tactics, right? So it's about getting your weapon up, right, where you can see. Understand? Any questions on a high compress? Let's talk about a low compress. A low compress, like the low ready positions in the past, is this, right? You're already on the shoulder mount. 
right? And you just drive the gun up, driving the gun up. What we do nowadays is we come over the shoulder, right? And we drive the gun up. See, he's already on fire. Here, driving the gun up. So imagine if this is a wall and the door, I'm coming in, I'm driving the gun up, see? I'm right on fire. Understand? So the compression, the compression, what, why do I need to compress the gun? Why am I teaching you this? Because if this is a wall and this is a room which your guys are in, this is a door opening, if I don't compress the gun, I can overexpose the muzzle. Understand? I can overexpose that 90 degree angle on a threat. We understand what 90 is on a threat? For anybody who don't understand 90 on a threat, this is a 90 degree angle on a threat, and this is a 45 degree angle on a threat. Okay? Okay. So those are angles, we're gonna talk about more of that tomorrow, but we have to learn to manipulate a gun first. Eyes and ears, meet me downrange. So when it comes to rifle training, right, and one of your skill set is to conduct close quarters battle with this higher power rifle, then you need to understand the data from this range. If I put you at five yards, think about this distance. What is this mimic in your world? In your house, what's this mimic, sir? A bedroom. That's right. Okay, so now we're identifying distance. You have to understand distance because you don't understand distance that you don't understand timing. Because if I take your distance, I take your time. And close quarters is close quarters battle, so I already took, because you close in with the threat, you don't have time. So your, your movements have to be fast and your, your angles and your position, your body has to be on point because what I'm doing is I'm angling on a doorway. I'm angling on a hallway, right? So these movements now needs to be developed here. All right, so the first movement we're gonna learn is the high compress. The high compress engagement is I'm bringing the weapon up like this, like almost like port arms. Right, so I'm bringing the weapon up, okay? Notice my shooting position. I'm in an athletic shooting position, right? Like a boxer, okay? I'm bringing it up. Notice how my head is upright. My body, my head is over my body. I'm not lean forward. If I lean forward, I want you, right now, I want you to just stand there, right here, in the sosily stance, I want you to lean your head forward. Feel the weight shift on your toes. Do you feel it? All right, lean backwards, you feel it? So if you're able to feel the balance from your, your head balancing over your spine, right? That's what you wanna be, because that keeps you mobile. So that changes your shooting position, right? So the days of getting aggressive is over. Now it's more upright, so I could see. Understand? So then the high compress, high compress, I'm going off the muzzle and I'm punching the gun out and I'm firing, okay? Now, let's talk about this range. I got you on a three inch box, okay? Three inch box. So guys, basically what I did was, I'm giving you 27 countries. I took 27 countries and I divided what worked for me overseas for so many years and I, I developed a closed quarters training rifle course that is gonna enhance your moves in the house. So the first thing is a push, a high compressed push. The, um, the requirements is muzzle, muzzle over the threat. So imagine your muzzle, so if I tell you engage one, your muzzle should be kind of hovering over that threat, understand? And when you push, you're pushing like you're punching towards that one. The mechanics are always gonna be there. The body movements are always gonna be there. So if I work these movements over and over and over, what happens? It becomes habit, but you don't aim anymore. What I mean by that, if I enter a room, and let's say you're a threat, and you're a threat, all I do is shift my body, and everything's already in line. Everything's, because the movements are always, if I, if Trong is my threat, and I see you, see, I'm already on it, the movements are always the same. So what we're developing is the same movements. They call it Mushen. When all your emotions are eliminated, and truly your training kicks in, a state of no mind. Okay, so that's what we're working on today. So back off, circle around the demo. 
All right, guys, so the first, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, understand my offset at five yards. So center hold on one, center hold on one, so red dot on one, and I should be what? Based on my physical offset from my optic to my bore, what, what should I be? So I should be kind of two inches kind of below it, right? So you need to identify your sight to bore offset. You look at some of those X commandos from Somalia, they had these carrying handles and they had like a five inch, six inch offset because that was technology at the time. So you think about it. They had to hold five to six inches off a low percentage target. Is this a low percentage target? This is not a low percentage target? Sir, yeah. is this a, no. I see you shaking your head. This is not a low percentage target? Uh, the, the size of the box, yes, but this range, I would say no. Okay. All right, so. This is a low percentage target because when you come in a house, in a room, and you got that traditional hostage you know, target, this is what we're aiming for. This is what we're shooting. The thing is, remember, you're not gonna be standing out here doing this nice and beautiful and stagnant. I'm gonna jack your heart rate up to 160 and you're gonna start moving, okay? Later on, once you develop this push. Okay, so think about where we're going, eyes and ears. So nice and slow first, I just want to understand my offset from this range off of this ballistic. So on demo, one upper deck. So, point of aim, point of impact, understand? At this, at this range. What do you think I'm going to do next? I'm going to keep on going back and back and I understand my offsets, understand this? All right, so, once you understand, notice the push. Get it? We get the push. And then once you understand your offset, now you're gonna adjust your hold. So on, on three, I'm gonna start adjusting my holds. Get it? Okay, very basic stuff. I'm building that data. Any questions on the high compress? Is the weapon back on safe once it goes off this mount? Is the weapon on fire once it's mounted, ready to go? All right, firing both eyes open, correct? All right, saucily shooting position, saucily shooting position, right? We're punching out like this. I don't want to see you upright. I want to see slight bend in the knees. All right, first uh, iteration up. Can you talk about structure on the gun holding it? The structure on a gun is, for me, I, I try to mimic a pistol and a rifle the same way on a four drive hand. Four drive hand on a pistol is this, right? It's giving me what? Structure because I have what? Wrist line structure. On a drive hand because I have this, this forward grip, look at, the, look at the structure. Same structure, okay? So what's that give me? What's that give me? Your threat and Russ, your threat? Right, I'm gonna to point towards, you. I'm already on you. So if I'm able to point with my thumb to the threat and my structure's there because I've been doing these movements over and over, you think I really need to aim at this point? Unless it's a low percentage, right? So what I'm training you is speed on a gun at this distance because I took your time to react. Okay, make sense? All right. Any questions on the forward hand? Any questions on the drive hand? The movement from low ready or movement from a compressed position, once you hit that, it's already on fire and the, the um, trigger finger's on the trigger, ready to go. Okay, ready to go. Don't over push this where you punch through that trigger. Okay, nice and, nice and fast, but that trigger finger is already on the trigger. So, you out of the way, Tyler? So load a gun, okay? So see, I'm already on that wall, okay? But I have trigger discipline. So it's a very aggressive movement, light on the trigger. Make sense? Okay, and then what we're gonna do? Three rounds, and then from there, you're gonna adjust your holds. Understand? So you should have three rounds. Your first round is point of aim, point of impact, two, two inches. And from there, you adjust your point of aim where your point of impact is knocking out the black. Understand? Jeff, Sir. take control. 
Evens on the line. So why would we do this? Why, why would we go into this drill, right? Guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you as much knowledge as I can, right? So you're not gonna be able to run these iterations so you feel comfortable. It's not about that. It's about me giving you a snapshot of how to train yourself and be proficient when I'm not here, okay? So I'm gonna give you all this knowledge. So when do we do high compress? When would we go there? Think about if, if I need to get, so this is a hallway and this is a door and I need to get into this area, right? So clear gun. So here I'm high compressed, see I'm, it allows me to drop that muzzle in. in. In CQB, if you guys know the tactics of CQB, then you understand that we flood a room in CQB, right? So think about number one, number two, the dig corners, number three, number four, is it more proficient to sweep the gun up or drop the gun down center line on the room? What do you think? Drop the gun down. Okay. So that's why I'm not so concerned about low ready and high. Dude, if you know how to fucking do CQB, you're going to set your weapon up for success because you're, you're dissecting that room, dissecting that door. Understand? You're looking at where your teammates are at, and you need to angle that door, and it depends on a low compress or a high compress. Depends on your teammate. Depends on you. Depends on, you know, you need to center, uh, if you need to snapshot that room or not. Understand? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work a low compress. Jeff, new targets? Yep. So we're going to work a low compress. Low compress, unlike the low ready that we're taught, weapons clear, the low, low ready that we're taught, because they're saying, hey, if my, if my buttstock is already mounted onto my shoulder pocket, all I do is just try burst the gun up. But if you feel the weight of it. Also, notice how I'm all already forward extended. So is this really conducive to me in a house if I'm trying to exercise muzzle discipline on a threshold, right? So you have to be able to pull your weapon back, all right? So the low compress, the low compress is me not doing this traditional way, but me coming up this way. Notice how my weapon is up like this. This is a low ready for us now. Okay, so instead of the old days of pushing, remember I told you, it's the same movement. It's punching out, weapons already on fire, I'm bringing this back into my shoulder pocket. So again, weapons clear, low compress, low compress, bring it up, on fire, back on safe. Here, low compress, bring it up, fire. If you find yourself doing this, that's wrong. Upright, upright, normal. Because I want to be able to walk, I want to be able to see, I want to be able to move, I want to be able to poke around, see how I'm moving my feet, right? I want to be able to do that. I can't do that when my weight's forward. I can't do, I can't transition to a gun, right? Because I'm going to have to get back, I'm going to have to get back up on that level, right? Otherwise, I'm going to have to clear my gun like too much movements. So if I'm upright, I can transition to my pistol if I need to. Understand? All right. Again, low compress. Here. Any questions on low compress? All right, guys. Jeff, take okay. control. Loose, loose. Look. Right up. Loose. Relax. You know, sometimes. You know, I could demonstrate all day, but then if a student demonstrating, everybody, oh yeah, that's good. So come on out here. Come on, watch, I, I want, look at his kit, right? Look at his kit, but I want you to look at his movements, right? Bare, minimal movements. You know, people ask me, you know, too, why the martial arts, why? And I say, you know, from A to B, what does the martial arts mean, right? From A to B, is to do something with proper form. If you're able to do something with proper form, then it becomes effortless, right? So this is the martial arts of it. So watch his effortless. So uh, engage your target again, go back out here. I want you guys to kind of horseshoe around, but watch how effortless it is. All right, get where you can see his gun push. Shooter's ready, stand by, push, push, push. Thank you, sir, thank you. You see, effortless, right? 
notice the mount, notice the mount. His body didn't shift. He didn't have to fight his kit, all right? And that's where we need to be, bare minimal movements, okay? So what I'm te why do I teach you how to mount the gun? Why am I teaching you that's so important? Because back in the old days, when I'd go in a hallway, number one and number two in a hallway was down there fucking optic. Was down there optic. What do you think would you see when you're down your optic? You see that fucking red dot and you see that. So what we do now is we kind of compress our weapons either in high or low. Number one, number two, they're already kind of offset, but they're off that gun a little bit. They're off the gun so they can see what? Right? So if, if I'm coming here, he's threat, bare minimum movements. He's bare minimum movements. Understand? And the push method was the fastest for me versus leverage on a gun, the weight on a gun going up. Make sense? Any questions on this? All right. So the next iteration up. Jeff, take control. Faster and a punch. Push for speed. Push for speed. Yes, push, yes, push, that's it. All right guys, compress on demo. All right, so on demo, on a push, I'm here, I'm pushing aggressively. Some of you guys are doing this. No, you, you have to let go, man. You have to let go of all your muscle tension, right? Because your shoulders are stiff. Some of you guys are built like fucking rhinos out here. If you guys are that, you got to let go. Because you can only move like water if you let go of the muscle tension. So watch my muscle tension. I'm letting go of my muscle tension. I'm here. I'm letting go of my muscle tension. See? Letting go of my muscle tension. I'm here. Get it? Nice snapping movement. The only way I could do it is I let go of muscle tension. Some of you guys are really locked in or like, ah, right? And what happens is you overdrive the gun, second, and you're too uh, tight, so that means you're not gonna move fast. We're here for you, and my biggest goal is to be able to train you on an individual skill set and a team skill set that you're able to progressively advance your team through this training curriculum. So you're able to snapshot my sequence of how I train for close quarters, then you can take this and implement on a flat range and mimic in a tape drill into a shoot house, understand? So that's what we're doing. Do we see how these mem uh, movements can snap in the house? Can we, can we use this in the house, you see it? All right.